I just leave you off here, Kim? No, 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 I got you. I got you. It's nothing is that simple. Okay. Okay. Coach is already taking charge. Good morning and welcome. My name is Mike Robles. I'm the Assistant Athletic Director for Communications. And on behalf of UC Davis Athletics, we want to welcome you to a very special and exciting press conference for all of us involved with UC Davis Athletics, the introduction of our new head coach, Dan Hawkins. A uh, little housekeeping this morning, you'll be hearing from our uh, Chancellor, Ralph Hexter, as, long, as well as our Director of Athletics, Kevin Blue. And then you'll be hearing from our head coach, uh, Dan Hawkins, um, and then we'll do a question and answer period following that uh, from the media, and then we'll be open for one-on-one -on -one interviews following that. So once again, we thank, thank you for all of us, uh, from all of us at UC Davis Athletics for coming out this morning. And with that in mind, we'd like to bring up to the podium Director of Athletics, Kevin Blue. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, everybody, for coming. We really appreciate your support of UC Davis Athletics and UC Davis football. Uh, today we're introducing uh, Dan Hawkins as our 17th head football coach uh, for the UC Davis Aggies, a program that dates back to 1915, and we're very proud to do so. Uh, helping us do that today is our interim chancellor, Ralph Hexter, and I'd like to invite Ralph to say a few words. Thank you, Kevin. Good morning, and boy, is this an exciting day for all of us at UC Davis. I'm thrilled that Dan Hawkins will be returning to UC Davis where he got his start both uh, his football career and in being a student athlete. How fitting that someone who played here and studied here and worked with the legendary Jim Soaker is coming home to Davis. Aggie Prime was born, defined, and amplified by Coach Soaker. His tenets of trust, unity, and togetherness are the foundation that each generation of Aggie players has built on. I have no doubt that Coach Hawkins will reinvigorate our students, our campus, and our community with Aggie pride and remind us of what we can accomplish. The, term, the determination and positive energy that Coach Hawkins is known for will reignite our passion for the game and remind many of what is possible as he carries us to victory. I have full confidence that Coach Hawkins has accomplished, that given what he's accomplished at Boise State and at the University of Colorado, is what he will be bringing to us at Davis, a deep understanding of Division I football and what it takes to motivate our student athletes to excel in this heavily competitive game. So today, we make a fresh start for UC Davis football. Uh, welcome home, Coach Hawkins, and go Ags. So um, welcome also, Misty. And um, I now turn the podium back to Kevin, and I am terribly excited. So as many of you know, uh, Dan is a very experienced head coach, uh, having led teams at multiple levels of football. You know, he, he was, he's been the head coach at Christian Brothers High School, at Willamette University, uh, Boise State, University of Colorado. Uh, he coached in the Canadian Football League. He's coached internationally ex um, on an extensive basis. And we're really thrilled to bring that level of experience uh, and that level of understanding of the, the head coaching position to UC Davis. As you also know, Dan, is a, he's a UC Davis Aggie himself, having played fullback for us uh, in, the er, in the early 1980s. And, and then he began his coaching career, uh, mentored, as, as interim chancellor Hexter said, by uh, Coach Soaker, and also, very importantly, by Coach Bob Foster. Uh, and we're very, very pleased to, to welcome Dan back to his, his alma mater. People who know Dan well also know that he possesses an uncommon intellectual curiosity uh, and a passion for the scholar-athlete ideal that really resonates with our community and is in line with uh, our values here at UC Davis. And we're excited for Dan to be here. He's going to be a great fit for our, our university. Please join me in welcoming the uh, head coach of the UC Davis Aggies, Dan Hawkins. Well, my number one goal is to get through this without crying. I've got to be honest with you right now. Uh, I was telling Bob that uh, I don't know that exciting is always the, the, the best word. Uh, 
One of the great things about Kevin is he's going to challenge me intellectually, and I've already learned that I'm going to have to up my vocabulary. And uh, It's funny, when I came to Davis, everyone thought I was from Texas, which I was not. I'm from Beaver, California, but I guess we just talk like we're from Texas. Uh, in 1981, I packed up my 1974 Camaro and came down from Weed, California, uh, to UC Davis and uh, had everything I owned in the back of that car and uh, in the passenger seat and uh, I always say sometimes uh, you got to get lucky and uh, uh, that was a I didn't make it very far <laughs> um, I've always said this place was my baptism of excellence, and uh, it, uh, it showed a little guy from a town of 500 people uh, A town of 500 people, what you truly can accomplish, uh, and what's really, what really what life is about, and uh, the quality balance of life, as I've always said, and uh, it all started here, and I tried to, everywhere I went, I tried to echo that same experience, and when I left here to be the head coach at Christian Brothers, uh, I was 25 years old, and I was pretty sure I invented football. Uh, <laughs> And that some of these guys named uh, Rockney and Walsh and Landry would probably pale in comparison to what I had to offer the game. Uh, but I remember thinking this. I said, what is it about UC Davis football? And I said, you know, the thing I came to was it was a good feeling. It was a good feeling. And what did that mean? What did that mean? Why was there a good feeling? And it came down to being around a bunch of coaches and a bunch of players who had a zeal and a zest for life intellectually, academically, athletically, and really embodied that. As Coach Foster talked about Aggie pride, that's what it was. And I went about that daily in my career trying to recreate that good feeling of being an excellent coach, an excellent role model, an excellent mentor, of looking beyond the gridiron of where these guys would be. And that all started here. And I've been very fortunate. I've been to some great places. I've had a lot of success, and a lot of it started here. What I bring to the table this time around, life in the real world, as I call it, it's the tip of the spear. It's competitive, sometimes brutal, sometimes exhilarating, but it comes down to the details. I've had a lot of amazing, unique experiences in a lot of countries, in a lot of cultures, in a lot of places. I'm my best me right now. Best as a person, best as a father, best as a husband, best as a football coach. And as I looked at the definition of fulfillment, and my wife looked it up, she talked about divine providence, and it's the right place, it's the right time, it's the right fit. To be at a place that says, you know what? You can be a great football player and graduate number one in nuclear physics as Mike Shaw did when I was here. This thing we call academics and athletics, it's not mutually exclusive. It's together. Our players will get tough. I'm into this excellence with class. I don't care how it is, how you dress, how you walk, how you play, how you study. All that stuff flows together, and it enriches all of us, and we all build and grow together. Telling Kevin I had a great opportunity at Boise State. We 
partnered with a professor in the business school that was doing a model of creativity and here a football coach and a ballet company and a theater company bonded together about how do you build this cauldron of creativity. When I was at Colorado, we took our coaches show around and we had so many tremendous academic programs and highlighted instructors that never get the credit they deserve but need to be exposed. We're at a university that's got over $700 million in grants every year. And I had one of my buddies just text me a second ago and he said, Hawks, congrats on the game. Go Mustangs. <laughs> I appreciate that, but that's not exactly who we are. Another friend of mine, hey, congrats, so fired up your back home at Cal Davis. <laughs> well, that's not who we are either. So we're the front porch of the university. We're the inspiration of the university. The modern university is this confluence of business and education and mentorship, promotions. It's all, we all work together and we roll together in the same vein. Great new museum on campus. This place is amazing. I haven't been here for a while, but all the new buildings, we got to grow together. I was telling Raul in the business department, we, I partnered with the business dean of business in Colorado, and we, we got in there, and he was fighting for facilities because he wanted the best business students too, and he wanted a new building. We work together because football gets something, everybody gets something. If physics gets something, everybody gets something. Then we're all on the same team. So I'm fulfilled to be here. I've had opportunities to do other things. But it's always been about the right fit for me. The right fit, number one, for my family. The right fit for me, morally. I love, Kevin keeps using this term. I actually didn't know this was an actual term, but he, he did moral uprightness. That doesn't sound like, you know, I, I, but I'm into that. Doing the right thing because that's the right thing to do in all times, in all phases. Use this phrase a lot of times, quit trying to win and just be a winner. What do winners do? What do great husbands do? What do great fathers do? What do great professors do? What are the people doing that are trying to change our world for the better? I talked to the team last night, I love those guys. They were locked in, locked in. So here we stand in a new day. I'm here largely, largely, because of a few people who are vested in many people. Some prime investors that believe in what we're doing here and are willing to put forth their wallet and their time and their effort. I can't tell you how extremely impressed I am with Kevin. Everybody kept telling me, you're going to like him, you're going to like him, you're going to like him, you're going to like him. I said, well, I'll find out for myself. But he's got a plan, he's got a vision, he gets it. He gets the academic component, he gets the intellectual component. He understands the role of athletics in a major university, the potential that can be here. <clears throat> Chancellor Hester, I think, gave him the green light. I'll tell you one thing, when this thing went down, of course, I had a lot of people going, are you interested? I said, I'm interested. But guess what? My clock's ticking. My clock is ticking, and this has to happen fast. And it did. It basically happened from Wednesday to Sunday. Because of these two guys, that the chancellor realized the situation, gave Kevin the green light, the attorneys worked with him. I thought it was great. First time I ever really negotiated the contract with an athletic director on the phone. No agent, no attorney, man to man, working with each other. It's pretty fun. Worked out good, didn't it, Kevin? Spare? <laughs> I was kind of keeping score, though, on some of the stuff. <laughs> um, but what I bring to you is a guy, really, who had a great career, did a lot of amazing things, had some failures, too. I have a buddy of mine in Microsoft said, Hawk, if you were in high tech, you'd be the hottest guy in the business. They'd be on you. But you know, when you go through some of that stuff, man, life is the richest, and you learn the most. And I've really had the benefit working with ESPN and Sirius Radio. I've got my PhD in football. Now, Bob Biggs has had to hear my wrath a little bit, and Coach Foster's had to hear my wrath a little bit. 
because you see things over. It's like a researcher. If you're trying to pass the Manuel Whitney U statistical inference test, I've done it in football. I get it. I know how critical certain things are to the success. And when I say talking about the tip of the spear, again, you guys know this. These men been successful in business and marriage. It's about details. Trust me, I forgot my wife's birthday one time. That was not a detail you should forget. <laughs> <laughs> Only once. But see, I learned. My dad used to tell me all the time, once is a mistake, twice a behavior. Um, so yeah, I come to you, a guy from Beaver, California, a bunch of loggers, farmers, ranchers, first generation guy, rolled into College of the Siskiyous, still didn't know much, fortunate, had a couple of good games against College of the Redwoods, and Coach Foster had a buddy coaching there, and I had one phone call, and I rolled down to Davis and spent some time here, and I said, yeah, this, this, is, this is my kind of deal. And uh, I really didn't know what I was getting in for, to be honest with you. I really didn't. But that's the value of education, right? That's the value of taking somebody from over there and getting them to over here. And I bring all this stuff to bear as a guy who loves the academic component, that loves the zest for excellence on the field and developing great people. I got a couple of my former Frank Scalercio, Steve Enos, you know, out great people. The guys that were in that locker room with us together were spectacular. Expect for the 40-year-old guy who just got through lap swimming in the Speedo sitting next to us while we were getting ready for a game. That was not, that guy was, but. <laughs> Chris Peterson and I joke all the time, you know, about really what's important and what's, and, uh, and it's the truth. And Frank knows that we didn't have our own locker room, and you'd be in there getting ready for the game, and there'd just be regular folks in there, and, hey, how you doing? I'm getting ready for the game, okay. Um, but I couldn't be more thrilled, I guess excited. I just think that term sometimes gets used. I mean, couldn't be more thrilled, more fulfilled to be here in a place that fits me at this time, at this place, that we can go do great things and expose the amazing faculty, this amazing world-class institution, ranked number one in the universe in veterinary medicine, who some people think are Cal Davis and the Mustangs, <laughs> to attract the best and brightest faculty and students to come here for that enriching experience. And that's that's what football is all about. I always said my dad was my hero, but Coach Foster was my role model. And that guy taught me how to be a coach. And he also taught me how to be a man. And I've told many guys, those of you that know Coach Foster, right in the thick of it, trying to figure out a game plan. I think we we're getting ready for North Dakota State, who decides right in the middle of a crucial part of game planning to say he's going to go home and have dinner with his wife. Now, I'm a young coach. Now, remember, I invented football. <laughs> so I'm not really seeing that correlation. And a guy who, who throws the film in his knapsack, puts the bungee cord and bungees the projector on the back of his bike and rides off into the sunset. And I remember that as if it was yesterday. That had a huge impact on me. And I tell you what, you get lucky. This was lucky. Misty Hawkins, I got lucky. Okay. Now, people always say, yeah, I kicked your coverage. And I said, well, yeah, but you got to know how to punt. <laughs> but I've been married awesomely for 35 years. Awesomely. You're going to hear me a lot. People always go, hey, how you doing, Hawk? And I go, awesome. They're like, oh, how? I mean, who wants to be? Fine. How was your marriage? Fine. <laughs> how did your life go? Fine. Who wants that? Nobody wants that. We want awesome. That's what we want. I told the guys last night, that takes work and dedication and sacrifice, commitment, and we're going to get in there. But they're not going to play for anybody that loves them more and cares about them more as a person down the road than me, and nobody that cares and loves and knows about the science of football than me. I've seen it. I've done it. I've walked it. I've been on both sides of it. So we come here together to rally up. Great to see the Cal Aggie Banda <laughs> out front. One time, Port, uh, Davis was headed up to Portland State, I think, to play, and they played on our field at Willamette. And 
Much like today, they were playing before the game, and I got up to give the pregame to our team, and I couldn't do it. I just started balling. I mean, they were playing. I was just balling in the locker room. I just go play. Just get out of here. Uh, but really, really, really fulfilled. It's more than excitement. It, it, it's the perfect storm. It's the right place. It's the right time. It's what Dan Hawkins has. It's what UC Davis has. It's what I need. It's what you need. It's the coming together. But we need, we need the alumni to rise up. We need help. There's this thing in your pocket called a visa. Okay? <laughs> now, I would tell you this. Just walk around the corner. You're going to see Dan and Misty Hawkins' name up there. I've done it. Just got through putting up a uh, statue of Coach Soaker. Bob Biggs called me. I was in on that. And we need, we need players. We need recruits. So all you guys watching, all you Aggies watching, if you can play and you're a scholar baller, I want to hear about them now. And we want them in blue and gold. Because this train is rolling. And it's rolling the right way. And it's going to be magnificent and it's going to be magical and we're going to do it the right way, and we're going to do it together. Humility <laughs> before honor. That will happen to all of us. And I know this, guys. I cannot do it by myself. I've figured that out. The young Dan Hawkins wasn't so sure about that. But over here, those of you who haven't seen me for a while, that's knowledge. Schmeid! Schmeider! And this right here, that's wisdom. <laughs> Knowledge and wisdom. Enos, you're doing pretty good. You got a little knowledge coming in there. <laughs> My man Frankie, though, you got none. What's going on, Frank? <laughs> Trish, is, Trish is treating you right. Um, but you can't do it by yourself. We well, you know we got to be all in with the faculty and help each other and work with each other and collaborate with each other. And I know there's a lot of groups on campus that can help us with the science of football, enrich that experience. You know, we need the donors, we need the alums, we need the fans. We gotta have people come here on Saturday to witness something special. It's fun to get up and guarantee wins. I don't know if that's ever possible, but I know this, we're gonna be creative, we're gonna be innovative, we're gonna be exciting. We're gonna be we're gonna be entertaining. That's that's part of why you come here. To see that. And I, and I wanna bring that to you, and I wanna work with you, and I wanna partner with you. And I want to build this thing the right way together with the leadership uh, that we have here. Am I proud? You bet. Am I excited? You bet. Am I fulfilled? Yep. Am I grateful? Yep. The clock is ticking. Players are waiting. Staff is waiting. It's time to go. I really, really thank you from the bottom of my heart of having confidence in me to have this post. I gotta acknowledge my man. Uh, what are you doing over there, Fred? In the side. I'm wearing Coach Arp's tie right now. <laughs> Coach, how many years you been associated with Aggie football? Since 1963. 1963. I remember Coach Arp telling me when I was coaching here. I was coach. I was coaching defense, and he. I was great. But then when I went to Christian Brothers and I became the head coach at Christian Brothers, he said, you know, now, Hawk, you got to know, I, I don't like you anymore. I said, why, don't, why is that? He goes, I don't like head coaches. I just don't like head coaches. I said, <laughs> I hope we can get past that, Fred. Oh, okay. He was happy that I was an offensive guy, though, and that I came over to coach defense, so that kind of got me in a little bit of good graces. Uh, but so many familiar faces, uh, love being here, love being around. Hey, hey, hey. I know you, big time. <laughs> you get up here right now. Come up here right now. You come here. I'm not afraid. <laughs> Hiding back there underneath your glasses and your scholarly hey, look. Hey, man. Good to see you. Good job. Stand right not here. A, not, a, not a bad move. My man, Sam Young. Wow. I always said my wife will back this up. Hi, Misty. I said if I could find one guy in America that knew the most about everything in football, that guy. 
But you know what? He also, again, he's an Aggie. He gets it. Singing Sammy. The man has an appreciation for fine, fine music. I love you, Sammy. But it's not about me, Hawk. It's about you. No. I'm, go a, I'm going down to sit down now. It's about us. <laughs> you back there hiding out underneath your glasses. I had to peek back and go, hey, that's Sam Young. Uh, wow. I just, want, I just want to go on record. I, I drove through crazy traffic because I've been, you know, so living good. in the nether regions of coaching junior college football and uh, living in seclusion in Turlock, California. But I did make it. I'm glad to see you. I did make it. I'm glad to see you. I'm glad to see you. Good luck. Thank you. You know, it's crazy. <laughs> You don't see somebody for 30 years, and you look at him, and you go, that must be his dad. No, no, no that's actually him. That's actually him. Um, but again, Kevin got on me last night because I did go along with the players, and I see a couple of guys around here, and I apologize for that a little bit. Uh, and, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a quasi-millennial. I have millennial kids, and, you know, I do have Twitter. and I'm, I, I, I get it. I get it. But I did go a little bit long last night, but he tolerated me. So, and I've probably gone a little bit long here today. So, I, I couldn't be more excited. I couldn't be more thrilled. I couldn't be more ready. I don't think Davis is more ready than it's ever been. So, let's buckle up. Let's do it right. Let's think about Aggie Pride. Let's think about these students and the mentorship that needs to go on. The futures that, 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 that can be in their, in their place if they come here and they're enriched here and the things that a great football program can do to an entire university, an entire community. That's, that's the modern athletic model. That's the modern university model. We no longer exist in a silo, any of us. I have to help everybody. Everybody has to help me. So get on your Aggie shirt and let's go. Go Eggs. I'm not a scholar, I was definitely not a baller, I'm too old, but I want to play right now for this man. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, uh, questions from the media, we just ask if you identify yourself so Coach can... Where's, where's Rocco? Where are you Rocco? Where's my bag Rocco? You got my bag? I need my bag. So, any questions from the media to get started? Oh, we're all waiting for afterwards. Don't be Bruce. shy. Dan, Bill Patterson here from the Sacramento Bee. Uh, Hi Bill. Tell me about your... Uh, I met with them last night. Uh, I better get on the mic here. I know this from doing TV work. Uh, I better get on the mic. I met with the staff last night. I'm going to talk to those guys individually and give them their due diligence. Um, I obviously know a bazillion guys. I told the team last night I don't have anything set right now. I think it's always interesting in this game, and we talked about this in the in – the, uh, the interview that it's always kind of cool when you got this group of 10 guys that are going to move here tomorrow. But that's not really appropriate and that's not probably realistic. Um, so uh, I hope that we can, uh, we can attain some of the guys that are here and attract some of the brightest uh, from around the country. Now, this is going to be a little tighter than it ought to be. I'm just going to tell you that now. Okay. Uh, now, people have always asked me, Hawk, what did you play? I said, full guard. <laughs> well, what is that? I said, well, basically I was a guard in the backfield. And about three times a year, Bob Biggs and Jim Soaker would see fit to give me the ball. <laughs> that was probably in a moment of weakness. And then the other reality is, I remember a few games where I was called to get the ball, and then Ken O'Brien would audible out of it. <laughs> Kenny, if you know Kenny, he's got a great dry sense of humor, but I'd go, hey, he's like, Hawk, we're not giving the ball to you. <laughs> I'll tell you just a little funny story. I come here. <laughs> it's true. You know, I'm one of those guys, when you're in coaching, like everybody, they always say you get better. You know, you think you were better than you were, but when you're a coach, the more you coach, you realize how bad you really were, okay? But I showed up here, and I remember one time we were running 59-FO wheel. 
We're going to have that in the package, Biggs. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> 59 FO wheel. I got out in the flat, wide open, came back to the huddle. Ken O'Brien had thrown it down the field. I said, hey, Kenny, it's wide open. I said, first of all, don't ever tell me that. And second of all, why would I throw it to you when I can throw it to Alan Fleming? <laughs> now, the great thing about being a Davis guy was I was smart enough to figure that out. I said, hey, he's right. Any idea about your offense, what you're planning on running? Well, uh, the beauty of being at Davis is I think you have a, uh, a group of guys that you know, are capable of doing many things. Uh, I had the benefit of coaching in Austria this past spring, and it was great. Coaching internationally has been great for me uh, in many respects. And those of you that have been around the Germanic culture, I used to tell them a lot of times that they were smarter than Americans. And it's not that they were smarter, but they, they paid attention. You know, they, and you guys know this, when you're good, you pay attention. And the kids here, they, they pay attention. So you're, you have the ability to raise the roof a little bit more that way. I am into the kind of the modern style of football. Um, I'm into conflict of assignment. I'm into eye confusion. Some of that may not mean anything. Uh, but I don't want people to see ball, get ball. Uh, and what that means is if I give the ball going that way, I might be pulling people that way. We, we're going to give you a lot of things to think about, and we're going to be creative in that way. The tried and true effects of football are turnovers and, you know, like a field position and being great in the running game and being solid on special teams. That's, that carries through in every generation. But uh, I'm kind of funky. I'm kind of out of the box. I'm kind of a, you know, I, I'm willing to do some things a little bit different. Uh, and some of you may know there, there was an article written, you know, there's, a, there's a jersey hanging in the College Football Hall of Fame, and it belongs to a young woman that kicked for us at Willamette who scored the first points in a college football game. So don't box me in, because as you box me in, I'll get out of that box, I promise you. Uh, but I want it to be fun to, to watch. I mean, i got to be honest with you, I do ESPN all the time, and some of my buddies coach on some of these teams, and I tell them, you got vanilla ice cream going on here. I mean... Can you give me something to get excited about? I mean, I want. Can I see something fun? Can I see something exciting? Can I see something different? Uh, and that, to me, is that's part of the fun of it. It's uh, it's it's part of the entertainment of it. But all the tried and true effects. So it all starts with your players. What can they do? What are they good at? Uh, and that's something I've learned again at the tip of the spear. I think you come in and you say, "Oh, this is what we're going to do." Well, if your players can't do it, that's no good. It's no good. So we kind of have to work for from where they're from. And, and I, I want to say this, too, just a little bit, which I, I should have said earlier, but I, I know Ron Gould, and I respect Ron Gould, and Ron Gould's a good man, and he's a good football coach. And sometimes it's just not right place, right time. Sometimes you can't get to the tipping point. Sometimes you can't reach the boiling point for whatever reasons, for whatever reasons. And uh, I respect what he did here in a lot of ways of bringing the Division One model in and academically and, and the kids he brought in here and the staff. I totally get that. But I've been on that end, too, so I, I tip my hat to Ron. He's a good coach, and he'll land on his feet. And, um, but those guys have done a good job and done some good things, and we have to build off that. We have to take that and build off that. And so I have a lot of ideas buzzing around in my head for sure, but uh, like I said, I want our guys to have fun. I want it to be creative. Uh, we talked about being mastery-oriented, and I know, you know when we were here, <coughs> uh, our free safety and middle backer, Coach Foster, those guys would make the call, and then they ran it. It was their deal. Biggs and Soaker made a call, and then the quarterback, he ran it. It was his deal. I think that's part of it, too. There has to be ownership with the players. You know, if, uh, if we just sat in the bleachers and watched the game, our players should be able to do it and do it well, and we should be in addition to it. Uh, if we have to be the only engine driver there, it's not, it's not good. And it hurts them, quite frankly. So there has to be ownership there. I know that's nebulous, but uh, that kind of entails where we're at. Have you followed the big sky much? Oh, yeah. Uh, one of the things about me, I, I, again, I'm a purveyor of all things. I, I was at Willamette, was NAI, it's Division Three. Obviously, I came from Siskiyou's, which is junior college. I uh, have an appreciation for all that. And um, I told the guys the other night, do I have, have any players in here? Do I have any players? I thought I saw some guys, but uh, I asked them. I said, let me ask you something. I said, you guys want to get in the playoffs? Yeah. Okay. We had two teams from our league play. Anybody watch it? 
I didn't ask them to raise their hand, but I could see by the look on their face there were a lot of guys that didn't. I said, I watched it. I watched it. You know why I watched it? Because I want to be there. And I need to learn from them, and I need to see them. If we want to be there, we got to watch them. So, yeah, I paid attention, and I know, and I know guys coaching the league and well aware of what happens in this league. And obviously, had long, you know, when you're kind of connected in Boise State, which used to be the Big Sky team, you're, you're, in that, you're in that belt. So, well aware of the Big Sky, and it's a great conference, and it's going to get better when the Vandals drop in. So, it's only going to get better. Anything further at this time for Coach? Yeah. Well, good question. I'll tell you this. Toomey Field was uh, the north end zone folks were awesome, and we embraced that. Obviously, we were extremely successful. That is a lot of it. Um, but I think you have to engage. You have to engage. You know, this was Misty's idea. Actually, when we were at Colorado, we, I don't want to create a little bit too much excitement, but we didn't get a lot of students into the stands until about midway through the first quarter, and so she got this idea to take some money out of our wallet and start firing t-shirts into the stands that had money in it and <laughs> get students to the game early, <laughs> right? It's that kind of, it's engaging your students where they're at, meeting them on their, their turf. And, you know, what are their needs? What are their wants? What do they want to see happen? And I'm, hey, I'm, I'm wacky. I mean, I, you know, I think you guys did the freshman rush deal this year, but, you know, hey, they want to run out there and run through the tunnel and do warm-ups with us. I don't care. I got to have them in the stands. I got to have them engaged. I got to have them here. And, you know, that's, that's just sitting down and every situation is different and every situation is unique. But I think when you engage them and you meet them on their front and you know you're with them and you're helping them, you know, we used to do a deal where the kids would, uh, Rocco knows this, when we were in Colorado, the kids would move into the dorms and we'd send all of our guys over to help everybody move stuff in. You know, help them pack microwaves and, and whatever else they got to get in their dorm room. But, it's meeting them on their front and letting them know that, hey, they're students too. They're students too, and we need each other. Okay, so, Coach, thank you very much. For thank you. Awesome. So, at this time, uh, we'll make Coach available for some one on one interviews. I want to also acknowledge that Kevin Blue is available as well. Uh, Coach Bob Biggs is in the room, um, he's also available. And Bob Foster, who reminded me he's had a long drive to Oregon today, but is willing to stick around and answer some questions as well, uh, is developed also. So once again, let's give Coach uh, Hawkins a welcome to you today. And we thank you for coming out today, and have a great day. Thanks. Get your hat too. I like it. Boy, I'm geared up. I'm geared up. Huh? Huh? It's a little tight. It is mine, yeah. Yep. What's your name? Randy, nice to meet you. Remind me, Randy. I'll, I'll remember your face and I'll...